Hi, I'm Eric Bowling in for Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Let's get right to our top story. Today's big economic address by Donald Trump. The Republican nominee spoke at the Detroit Economic Club, where he not only delivered a refreshed plan to jumpstart the nation's economy with a focus on reducing taxes, he also managed to hammer Hillary Clinton's focus on economic proposals. All Hillary Clinton has to offer is more of the same, more taxes, more regulations, more bureaucrats, more restrictions on American energy and on American production. More of that. If you were a foreign power looking to weaken America, you couldn't do better than Hillary Clinton's economic agenda. My plan will reduce the current number of brackets from seven to three and dramatically streamline the process. For many American workers, their tax rate will be zero. Joining us now with reaction from Southampton, New York, Trump's senior economic advisor, David Malpass. David, thank you for joining us. Important day. So a lot of us have been waiting for specifics. I got to tell you, I'm a conservative, and I heard a lot of specifics today. Let me just start with, I think it was the most um, refreshing of the four. He had four areas. The tax reform. You guys talk about a 15% corporate tax. That's down from 35%. Deduct child care expenses from taxes, 10% um, repatriation, and the death tax goes away. I think these are going to resonate, resonate, with, uh, resonate with conservatives. It certainly is with me. Hi, Eric. And it, it should, uh, because they do cause growth. You know, I, I was really happy with the results of the speech. The room was warm. People were receptive. There was a lot of clapping. Uh, and that's because I think there were a lot of specific policies that people could really relate to. Uh, the, the, the big question is, how do, you, how do you create more prosperity? How, and you do that by unleashing the economy. And so Trump laid out ways to do that. And I think it was really right. Well let, let, me, let me dig into these, if you don't mind, David. I have a, a yep, business background, please. economics background. So you go from a 35% to a 15% corporate tax. You're going to lose a lot of tax revenue if things were to stay the, say, stay the same. Everyone talks about growth bailing them out, but what kind of number are we talking? We're talking, I'm guessing, close to a trillion dollars in lost revenue if, not, if everything stayed the same, right? Well, I, I don't know that that's the, what the scoring would be, but the economy is going to change a lot. One of the things that happens now is corporations avoid taxes by mo either moving offshore uh, or they or they uh, don't don't earn as much. They don't report the profit, and so if you have a lower rate, you're going to you're going to uh, create more investment within the U.S. economy. That's the goal. You want to bring people into the labor force, and it's not just on corporations, but the, there is also going to be a reduction in unincorporated business tax rates. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Hillary Clinton has hers going up, right. and it's, it's very mysterious how you could ever run an economy if you're taxing businesses more. I have a lot to get to, so I'm sorry. I'm going to pepper you with some of this stuff. The deduct okay, child care uh, expenses from taxes, does that apply to all levels, all, everyone who has a child, doesn't matter if you're rich or poor? Right. That's whether you itemize or don't. Uh, and so you might call it before the line or it's, it's a way that and, and there's also a cap at thirteen thousand dollars. So it's going to play very well with middle income people. Mm -hmm. OK, the 10, 10 percent repatriation tax, meaning when companies earn profits overseas and they want to bring it back, they were subjected to that 35 uh, percent tax bracket here. But you're going to bring it down to 10. How'd you come up with 10? Th that's exactly right. Well, that you know, we've we've had some of those in the past, and they work quite well. So 10 percent, I think, is a number that will allow companies to bring it in and induce them to bring it in, and it also brings in revenue to the U.S. government. So it works. It's a win-win kind of a situation. All right, death tax goes away. Estate tax goes away. Personally, I love this. I don't think enough Americans realize how much money the government takes from us for the second time. Uh, that's right. And also it causes lots of people to have to uh, hire a lawyer to do estate planning, even if they don't in the end end up uh, using it. And so that should go away. And that makes the economy more efficient. Now, right, let's talk about trade a little bit. Donald spent a lot of Mr. Trump spent a lot of time on trade, quite a bit of time on trade. And he talked to the, the one that he really went after was trade enforcement with China. Now, you talked about maybe a trillion dollars in, I don't know, net revenues or net money coming back to the United States. Is it really that big? 
Well, we don't know how big it'll be until the economy grows faster. The idea is to put uh, to create more manufacturing jobs, to have a, a real economy that creates entry-level jobs for a lot of workers. We've been losing a lot of those jobs to China uh, because it's cheating on its uh, uh, trade agreements. China does a lot of uh, stealing of intellectual property. See, that's a good one, David. So, David yeah. That's a great one. We know that it's rampant. China's stealing our intellectual property costs us hundreds of billions of dollars. I would agree with that. I'm just trying to figure out, um, he says he wants to uh, apply tariffs against China cheating. How so? How, how do you apply a tariff? First of all, I, as a free trader, I hate tariffs. Right. And so here's the key. You have to find a way to negotiate with somebody that doesn't want to negotiate with you. China has been entering into agreements and then not following, following through. Uh, arguably, they, they, they might say, look, it's very hard for us to do that. But that's, that's tough. You've got to have a way that, you can, you, that the U.S. can negotiate and get a better deal than what we're getting right now from China. That's going to create a lot of jobs. And I think it all still is in the context of free trade and more commerce. We want to have more fair trade going between the two countries. Do you, um, did you put a number, in other words, what's your growth rate have to be to, uh, to, to break even on this from in a tax revenues point of perspective? You know, I'm kind of skeptical of all those uh, economic models and people, you know, you're going to hear a lot of people yeah, throwing, yeah, David, throwing you need tomatoes. That. You need to come up with a number, a growth number, whether it's 3%, 4%, or 5% to say, hey, this plan is really good for America, but we also have a lot of expenses. So, so I think this plan will cause 4% growth, uh, and I think we need that uh, because otherwise what's happening is the middle of the economy is getting left out. A lot of people are dropping out of the labor force, millions and millions of people dropping out, and th they have to be brought back in. So the, 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 the 4% uh, I think is achievable. We know for, when for, Reagan for did a big... For how long? I mean, listen, I agree with you, 4%. Yeah. Reagan had 4% yeah. coming out of the, the recession slash depression. Well, he was he, handed, he had, but it didn't he had last 8%. that long. Yeah, that's right. But the average, the, the, the goal here is to lift the average growth rate. Over the last seven years, it's only been 2%. Right. I think we can get 3.5%, 4% average growth honestly, going forward. It's not unreasonable. The, honestly, it's not unreasonable. No, no, I agree with you. It's really not unreasonable yeah. given, given the history. And we've had such underperforming growth for the better part of 10 years now. It's not that far-fetched to see a 4% average growth. David, I've got to leave it right there. Thank you very much.